Nyasevenza, it's time that I actually look like I work. Come into a house with a carpet I like. Sit on a couch that doesn't sink but holds me, you know? Mm -mm. Plus that room divider that my mother gave me. You know? Instead of sitting on old couches, the 1990, it's time I buy my own couches. I work, my friend, I work. I work, eh? Hi, Shem. It's time I, I, my house needs to look like I work. You know, I touch stinky people's feet for a living, but they pay me. But they pay me. And this money is going to show. I get paid. beautiful people welcome back to my channel i'm kapana shimange and this is how i do things the show where you send me your questions and i'll let you know how i would do things now you can take it as advice use it don't use it do with it what you will i'm just letting you know what i would do if i was in your shoes now in life sometimes when we get started as adults right we take what we can get especially when you're moving into our own place you start into your one bedroom and you just you take the bed that you can get, you get the bed on special, whatever it is. Maybe your mama's gonna give you a bed. You take the couch that you can get, you get some hand-me-down sheets, and maybe you'll buy yourself one or two sheets for Mr. Price, and then, great, your life gets started. Then you move into a place that is a little bit bigger, because now you're working, right? You're earning a little bit more, you're staying in your own crib, but still, you don't get what you want. You take what you can get. Couches are expensive, so you buy the couch that you can afford, you stick with the small TV that you have because you're just like, eh, until I can afford another one, this one will do. You get the rug that your mother gives you. You get the couches that your mother gives you. You get the hand-me-down microwave from your sister and the washing machine from your sister as well. Maybe your brother will give you something else, the fridge. <laughs> and you do what you have to. And as you continue to move and grow in life, maybe you upgrade one or two things. But how do you actually do that? How do you actually start to say, okay, fine, you know what, I'm, I'm adulting now. I've been working for a while and a lot of the things in my house are hand-me-down, discounted things because that's what I could afford. But now I'm working. Now I'm making a living, you know? You know, I'm earning. I'm sevenzing, I'm getting the money. I think it's time for an upgrade. I think it's time that I actually live in a house that I picture for myself. You're in the house you want, or you want to move to a next house, or you have the car that you could afford at the time, and now you want a better car, or you're sitting on a couch that was a hand-me-down and you're thinking, it's time for me to buy a couch. How do you actually upgrade your life? How do you start to upgrade the things that you have and actually afford it and not actually get yourself into debt or get yourself into some serious money issues? Because that can happen. When we think to ourselves, okay, fine, did it, did it, did it. baby, let me upgrade you. You're thinking of upgrading your life, right? But how do you actually do that and afford it? How do you make sure that you can get that Pinterest living room or that Pinterest bathroom or redo your kitchen because now the cupboards are rotting? How do you afford it? On this Challenge the Tuesday, I'm going to let you know how do you start to raise the bar on your life? How do you start to upgrade the things that you have? Upgrade your car, upgrade your home, upgrade the things inside your house without breaking the bank. Now, if you have any questions that you want to send to me, head over to my Instagram and look for this picture right here. It's at Kopana Shimange. It's on my profile on my Instagram highlights. Reply and let me know what question do you want me to answer in our next video. It can be about money. It can be about being a mommy. It can be about style. It can be about being a lady, personal hygiene, feminine hygiene, whatever it is. Let me know and we will talk about it in our next video. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the topic of upgrading our lives on a budget, making sure we can afford it and not getting into those stupid personal loans that, that take forever to pay. Yeah, no, let's not get into that. Let's get into what you can do to afford an upgrade in your life. Number one is that you're going to want to calculate how much you can afford. That sounds easy, but sometimes you may find that something costs a hundred rand. You look in your wallet, you've got the hundred rand, so you can pay it, right? No, wait, not so quickly. Just because you can spend it doesn't mean that you can afford it. That may be a hundred rand that you're going to look at your life a little later with no petrol in your car thinking to yourself, damn it, that hundred rand is supposed to be for petrol. 
So just because you have the money in your account to pay for something doesn't mean that you can afford it. Have you paid for the things that are necessary for you to pay for? Have you got food in your cupboard? Have you got petrol in your tank? Have you paid your bills? Do you have electricity? So before you even think about upgrading your life and upgrading and spending more money on something, you need to look at affordability. How much money is actually left over in your bank account before you can actually spend it on something else? And that is after you've paid for everything you need in your life, all of your bills and all of your expenses. You're not gonna cut off on other things just so that you can expect, so that you can afford that car. Mm -mm, we're not going to do that. I know we've done that before. You're just like, mm, maybe I'll skip this payment. Nah. That way I'll have an extra 2,000 rand. When I'm canceling insurance, insurance is necessary. So figure out how much can you actually afford before you start looking at upgrading in your life. Number two is to actually start the upgrade fund. So what I've actually done for myself is that I saw that I have an extra amount of money every single month. And with that extra amount of money, I'm not gonna spend it all. I'm gonna take a portion of that and invest it and take the, up, the rest of that to upgrade my life. And that's what you should think about as well. If you have an extra 2,000 Rand at the end of the month because maybe you're earning a little bit more or that you're spending a little less on going out or spending a little less on petrol, then take that money and take a portion of that and invest more. You can always invest more. It's always good to invest more. Then you can take the rest of that for your upgrade budget. So just because you have extra money doesn't mean you have to spend all of that money on upgrading your life. Number three, look out for the trap. You're about to get trapped. You are about to get trapped. Okay, let me tell you how this works. The bank is gonna trap you. It's going to trap you. Let me tell you. When a bank gets to see that you have more affordability, so 30,000 comes in at the beginning of the month and you're left with 5,000 Rand at the end of the month, every month for about three months. The bank is going to call you and say, hey, you've been pre-approved. <laughs> and that's when we fall into the trap, right? We think I've been pre-approved for 100,000 Rand? What I could do with 100,000 Rand? That's a trap. You don't always need a loan to upgrade your life. Consider saving that money or consider upgrading over time. Instead of taking that 5,000 Rand and paying it off on a loan that will give you 100,000 now, Consider saving that money or upgrading in portions, which I will tell you about a little later. So rather than taking out that loan, try and save up that money. Yes, it may take you six months longer to do that or a year, but from an affordability point of view, you'll be in a better financial position if you choose to save up to the thing that you want to upgrade versus taking out a loan. Now, some people, what they do is that they can see that they can afford a bigger car, so they take out two separate loans, right? Or they take out a loan for their car so that they can get it financed. And then they pay a very big portion for their car, as opposed to taking that extra 5,000 Rand, saving for six months, paying a bigger deposit, and taking out a smaller loan. Over the time, you actually are in a better financial position if your loan is decreased by you using some of your savings to pay for it. This doesn't mean you have to dip into savings you've had before. It means you have to create a new saving fund for the thing that you want. Now, that's recently what I have done. I looked at my life and I thought, okay, fine. There's certain areas of my life I want to upgrade. But instead of taking out a loan, how about I save towards a goal? So I started to use the 227 app, which was created by Old Mutual. And what that app actually does is it helps me to look at my spending habits. And by looking at my spending habits, that's how I was able to alter my spending habits in order to create more money at the end of the month. So I took that money and I've been thinking to myself, how can I save and invest this money to work towards a goal that I have? For example, redoing the kitchen takes a bit of money. So instead of taking out a personal loan to redo the kitchen, I'm going to have a saving account or an investment account that I'm going to work towards a specific goal. And that's what I love. In the app, you actually have an option of calculating how much do I need to save and how long do I need to save in order to get to the goal that I want to get to. And 
This app helps me and nudges me every single time I need to save so that I don't forget to do so. And if that's something that you need, you need a little friend to help you to see that, okay, fine, here you are spending too much money, my friend. My friend, you do not need to go there. Maybe you need someone to let you know that, hey, 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 you're spending too much. You're not gonna afford your debit orders when they go off at the end of the month. Then you can actually use this app to be that friend for you because it has been that friend for me, which has helped me to save more and it's helping me to work towards a financial goal that I have. I'll leave the link in the description below. Number four is something that people don't always consider, but can you actually use that extra money to make more money? <laughs> yes, you may have a little extra money left over at the end of the month that you have been looking at your expenses and because of your behavior changes, you have more money left in your bank account. Now, you may want to use that to upgrade your life by buying a new car, buying a new house or buying new furniture. But can you invest that money in making more income? Are there places that you can go? Can you get a mentor? Can you get a coach? Can you learn a new skill? Can you invest in equipment that can help you make more money? For example, if I have extra money, then what I actually was thinking of is maybe I should invest in getting a video editor to help me to create more time for myself. So instead of using that money to buy a new couch, I got myself a video editor making me more time and helping me in my business. That way I end up making more money. So instead of having just 2,000 Rand at the end of the, at the, end of the month, after three months time, I have 10,000 Rand at the end of the month because I'm making more money. So think to yourself, do I need a coach? Do I need a mentor? Do I need to enroll into an online course? Do I need to enroll into a degree? What can I do with this money to increase my income? Yes, again, you're putting off buying that house or buying that car, but a year from today, you'll be in a much better position. Number five, assess your life and exactly what you need to upgrade. Make a list. We hate lists, I hate lists, but I've seen that lists help my life as much as I hate those things. They've improved my life. You know, I hate making lists, but they've improved my life, so I do it. So make a list. Now that we've looked at all the ways that you can spend your money other than actually upgrading it, if you've come to this point and you're just like, I still have money to upgrade my life, this is what I want to do. Then you need to go around your life and look at everything and think to yourself, what exactly do I want to upgrade? And you want to get the costs of exactly every single thing. You want to change your curtains? Make it, make it on your list and make sure you know exactly how much it's going to change. It's going to charge you. You want to change your carpets? Put it on the list and write exactly how much it's going to cost. If you want to upgrade your car, put it on the list and write exactly how much it's going to cost. Before you spend anything, make sure you make a full list of everything you want to upgrade in your life. If you want to upgrade your clothes, girl, if you want to upgrade your weave, if you want to upgrade your wig, put it on the list and make sure you know exactly how much that upgrade is actually going to cost you. Number six is to set priorities. Once you've made a list of everything that you want to upgrade in your life, then you want to prioritize the things that make sense first. So here's an example. You want to upgrade your living room and your kitchen. You want to redo your kitchen with new cupboards. So you think to yourself, the TV and the couch, they work perfectly fine. It's just that the, the couch was a hand-me-down, the TV is really small, so you want to upgrade that. However, the kitchen cabinets, they're starting to rot, they're starting to fall down a little bit, and they're hanging on by the last thread. So it may be cheaper to change your TV first. However, Changing the kitchen will make the biggest change in your life. It will make you feel way better than everything else. So you may want to prioritize the kitchen over the TV and the couch. And the reason why is that changing the kitchen makes the biggest impact for you as opposed to changing the TV. Now for you, it may be completely different. You may be thinking, I want to rehaul my wardrobe, but I also want to redo my living room. But changing your wardrobe may put you in a really good mental state, which will help you make more money. So maybe you want to start with your wardrobe first and then after a couple of months, then do the TV. So prioritize things not only by how much they cost, not only by saying start with what is cheaper, but start to prioritize based on what will make the biggest change in your life. What will put you in a better state? It may be just changing the lights around your house that will put you in a better mood, in a better state, put you in a better place for you to make more money and be happier. Then start there. 
Start with the thing that makes you the happiest, the thing that changes your life the most. Start there and then move on down the list according to price or whatever it is that you want to do. So this is leads me to point number seven, which is to start small and to build up. You don't have to change it all at once. And that's how they catch you with the home loans, right? That's how they catch you with the personal loans. They're just like, instead of upgrading biggie, 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 get a big loan and upgrade everything and then pay over time. Now, it could work the opposite way. Instead of paying back a home loan and changing everything, going big and changing everything, you could start small and change one thing at a time with what you can afford on a monthly basis. You'll end up changing your whole house in a year's time and not even having to take out a loan. Remember that when you take out a loan, you're not just paying back the principal, you're also paying back interest, which means that you're taking money out of your pocket for value that you're not getting. So rather take your time and do it slowly and also make better decisions. Because when you have a lot of money, you tend to spend on things that you look at it later, you're just like, actually, I didn't want that thing. But if you take your time and do it slowly, research what you need, then you can actually spend on things that you're happy to spend on and the change will be gradual as well as expenses being gradual, meaning that you won't put yourself in a financial hole. And finally, number eight, be patient. This does take time. Taking this approach takes time, but it puts you in a better place. With everything that you do, whether it is getting a new car or getting a new couch, be patient. Don't say you just need to do it this month or this week. Take your time and look at all the options that you have. This has happened to me several times. Take your time. When I bought my car, I took my time. I looked for that car. I knew the exact car I wanted until I found a really good deal on my car with low mileage. Same car, different price, even better condition than the ones that I'd seen before. So you want to take your time because the same happens with couches, the same happens with wardrobes, the same happens with kitchen cabinets, the same happens with everything, with tables. Take your time, be patient and look for your best option and negotiate. If you need to come back to a person eight times to reduce the price on the table you want, do it. Being patient is the best way that you can upgrade your life so that you can get exactly what you want. You want a specific table that costs 50,000 Rand? Keep going back to that person and negotiate or look for other options. You'll end up getting exactly what you want at a cheaper price because you took your time. Now there comes a time in our life when we feel as though it is time to upgrade, where it's time for us to treat ourselves, where we have been working and we think to ourselves, you know what? I work hard. I deserve a good couch. I deserve a beautiful house. When that upgrade comes, when that time comes in your life, don't rush into it. Take your time, be patient, and take the best option for your money. We may have a very long life ahead of us, and we don't want that very long life to be marred by debts and expenses because we were impatient. So go ahead and upgrade your house. Get that Pinterest bathroom. Get that couch that you want. Get the life that you want. Fetch the life that you want. I'm fetching my life, I hope you're fetching yours too. But make sure that you're making the right money decisions when you do. That's it that I'd have for you today on Chalita Tuesday. I'll be back next week with another topic that you guys have sent to me. All your suggestions, I take them very seriously and I create videos for you. So look out for those places where you can comment down below and let me know which comments, which questions and which videos you want me to do next. But until next week, gorgeous people, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Kupana Shimange and this is How I Do Things. Hey gorgeous, did you know that on my website I have financial resources that you can use to plan your finances and to know how much your dream life actually costs? Head over to my website, kopanaotshimange.com and you can get those free resources. Just sign up to the Gorgeous Gang and I'll send them straight to you. Have you subscribed? Click on my picture right here and join the Gorgeous Gang here online. Until next time, bye.